Welcome everybody. This is Information Service Engineering, lecture number eight, Knowledge Graphs, part three. Before I give you, as always, a brief introduction and a trailer about the content of this lecture, let's repeat what we did last time. So last week, we learned about the resource description framework. This was an easy means to encode information in a transferable way on the semantic web and information or knowledge was there simply structured like little sentences. You might remember this. We had a subject, we had a predicate or property, and we had an object. And based on that, we learned the basic building blocks of RDF, as well as, for example, RDF blank nodes, like also we learned about entities, we learned about literals and all the stuff. RDF alone doesn't carry much semantics, so we need some more basic building blocks to define schemata. And for that, the RDF schema description language has been introduced. So the nice thing about RDF schema is that there is some semantics, some formal semantics built in. And this kind of semantics enables us to draw automatically deductions and inferences and we can make implicit knowledge already explicit. And we learned this in the chapter RDFS inference. And finally, we were talking about knowledge graphs. We gave you the first, let's say, exhaustive or try to do an exhaustive definition of what is a knowledge graph. And we introduced several knowledge graphs and we're talking about the web of data. And exactly there we are going to connect in this lecture. So the very first thing we are going to do is an excursion. And we will introduce two of the most popular knowledge bases, knowledge graphs of the web to you. Number one, that's DBpedia. Like the name already suggests, this is of course also related to Wikipedia. DBpedia is a Wikipedia version as structured slash semantic data. So there for every Wikipedia article that you have in the English version of Wikipedia, you also have a DBpedia entity, which is described then by several facts about that entity, which are encoded in RDF and you can play around with it. So we will introduce DBpedia first. So it's a huge popular knowledge base. And then we will introduce Wikidata. Wikidata, as the name says, of course, is also related to Wikipedia. In fact, it's a real Wikimedia project. So this means this is also under the control of the Wikimedia Foundation. The difference to DBpedia, since DBpedia is only, let's say, an extract of what is in Wikipedia, Wikidata stands on its own and the user, like you are used to do that with some kind of wiki, the user is able to complement and to change the information that is also there given as structured information. And you will learn about the Wikidata knowledge graph. Both of these knowledge graphs will serve then as example for the content of the rest of the lecture. And what is the content? So this time we are going further in the semantic web technology stack. And now we are doing queries. We are querying knowledge graphs with Sparkle. Sparkle is a rather powerful query language that is rather similar to SQL sometimes also referred to as SQL. So this is the query language for relational databases now for more than 40 years. And if you already know SQL, Sparkle will be rather easy to you. However, it's based on different kinds of principles. What you define in Sparkle are so-called graph patterns. They are usually composed of, you know, you have a triple and in, in your RDF triple, you substitute some of the components via variables. That's a graph pattern. And then you are do pattern matching over a huge RDF graph. And this is how Sparkle works. So it's really not difficult. However, you can do rather sophisticated queries. So we will learn more complex queries and complex stuff in Sparkle and in the second part of the lecture. And then in the third part, we will again make it a bit more complex and we will show you how to do federated queries, which means how can I query several different Sparkle endpoints at the same time and combine their results. So we'll show you how you combine DBpedia and Wikidata data to come up with interesting conclusions. 
We will talk about aggregation functions. We will talk about variable assignments and so on. So you will see Sparkle is a rather powerful language, not only for querying, Sparkle can do more, but this all is part of this section of the lecture. So we are going to do Sparkle and we are introducing you to the two most popular knowledge graphs on the web. This will be the content of lecture number eight. Sit back, relax and enjoy.